One of the most amazing people who ever called Marquette home has one of the strangest yet most inspiring life stories you will ever hear. Will Adams was the adopted son of local lumber and railroad baron Sidney Adams and led a life so incredible that it begs to have a movie or a play made out of it. Well, that's exactly what local writer and historian Tyler Tischler did when he wrote a play called Willpower. Tyler tells us the first thing that made Will Adams so unique. He actually had a disease that he developed as a young boy, probably about age 10 or 12, that caused the bones in his body to harden, become like rock or stone um, from his legs up and eventually it worked its way through his entire body. Um, and the, the doctors did not really know what the cause of it was. It was suggested that it might have been from a baseball injury that he had, but no one really knew for sure. Um, the Adams family that adopted Will had numerous doctors come in and try to help figure out what the problem was and try to delay the ossification, but they really had no answers for it. Um, he, he started out, it was just his legs. As he got older, it became his upper body. And then eventually he was only able to like, move his head and his mouth. But despite his physical problems, Will Adams was bursting with creativity. So he did a lot of artwork when he was younger. When he got older, um, his, his interests also extended to music and literature. He wrote several plays. Um, unfortunately, a lot of what he wrote we've lost. Um, but he's, he's best, one of the things he's best known for is writing an operetta that he called Miss D.Q. Pons. It's a strange name and we're not really sure what the meaning of the name was. And unfortunately the operetta is lost, but we do have the programs from it that describe some of the characters and the songs that were sung. Um, by that point, Will couldn't really write, but he composed all the music in his head. And then he would hum it or sing it for his uh, friend Norma Ross, who was a music teacher in Marquette, and then she wrote all the music down, all the notes down for him. And together they finished the play, and she actually starred in it, and they performed it at the Marquette Opera House. It was a huge success. The, the crowd screamed author, author at the end, and kind of rushed the stage. Known throughout the city of Marquette, Will was friends with just about everyone, even those who were just passing through. He also was visited by uh, Lillian Russell, the famous actress. She came to Marquette and performed at the Opera House, and somehow or other she heard about him and she wanted to meet him, so she came over to the Adams House and talked to him, and uh, he, he basically told her her life story, and she, she talks about it in her autobiography, which is how we know. Will Adams passed away in 1909, leaving an amazing legacy despite, or perhaps because of, everything that he went through. He was uh, considered an expert on literature in Marquette, a, a playwright, a composer, an artist, a businessman. To, you know, he accomplished so much in just 36 years. Will just kept going on, like, you know, like the Energizer Bunny. He just kept going and didn't let anything stop him. And, and there's nothing that he left behind that is really negative or depressing or whining about his situation. He, I think he had a really wonderful sense of humor and a love for life. And over 100 years later, we're, we're still remembering him because of it. If you're interested in the life of Will Adams, you can pick up a copy of Tyler's play, Willpower, at local bookstores or at the Marquette Regional History Center.